joy. Please. Yes. So, it's a story you want, eh? Well, I'll tell you a story. A true story about a magical island. It's a royal place, fit for an emperor or a monarch. Green as an emerald, rising out of a fog like a great castle with towers and battlements and all the treasures that a place called Isle Royale should possess. And I, and I, my girls, have seen it all and more. Isle Royal. Ten thousand years ago, it rose a jewel in the middle of a lake called Superior. Before there were pyramids in Egypt, ancient miners scraped gleaming copper nuggets from her rocky hills. And Forty centuries later, modern miners would come to Isle Royal uh, again in search of precious things, copper and silver. Fishermen would come and mine the depths of the lake surrounding the island. But Isle Royal was to be no kingdom of men. <laughs> oh, she could be hard and, and cruel. And she took back all that had been taken from her. They'll tell you tales of ghosts, lost and lonely spirits that roam the island. ghosts in Isle Royal, they'll haunt the icy emerald lake that took them. There is a danger in the lake, danger in the clear green water, danger for ships and men. Coastal steamers, schooners, and mighty freighters, lost to an island of storms and fog, and to the rocky fingers reaching up from the depths of the lake. Oh, I reckon there are twenty and, and more, some a, a hundred years old, <laughs> and some I. I remember like it was yesterday, all sailing nowhere, frozen in time. There was one especially, they called her America. A name like that, she should have been unsinkable. And for, for 30 years, she was. Now she lies, barely covered, shrouded. An apparition, appearing in the calm and disappearing with the wind. The Lady of the Lake. She was, she was just a, a little steamer, less than 200 feet, but she was regal, ornate. I remember she was bound for Thunder Bay, up from Duluth, on her last trip. Her captain knew the North Shore so well, they called him Indian, Captain Indian Smith. <laughs> they said he could smell his way through a fog. It was not fog that took the America. She stopped on the island, Isle Royal, 7 of June, 1928. 
By midnight, the last of her island cargo was out of the hold. Then mail and dried fish were loaded back on board. Dinner had been served in a mirrored dining room, warm with the glow of candles. The passengers enjoyed the cool night air with hot drinks. <laughs> yeah, and they laughed and played cards on the afterdeck. Or even Captain Smith joined them for a while. But the last passenger was below when the single great propeller of the ship began to turn. At three in the morning, she backed away from the dock into a night so clear and calm, the stars reflected in the lake as if there was another sky below. It was only ten minutes before there was a scrape and grinding sound. The tender skin on America's hull was torn by a rock, and, and the water gushed into the hole. They were close to shore when they stopped moving, now hard aground on another reef. You could have jumped off the bow and walked to shore, but so nobody got wet, Indian Smith lowered the lifeboats and rowed his passengers to the beach. But not much more commotion than, than if they'd landed in Duluth. No passenger was injured, and only the pride of the crew was hurt. The stern of the little steamer was already heavy with lake water. They said the engineer blew off the boilers and lovingly greased down the engine to protect it before the water got that high. They thought, I suppose, they could refloat her. But the lake will not give you up once you're hers. And the engine of the little steamer America still gleams today. There were others. The Emperor of Isle Royal. Mighty was she, ruler of the lake. The largest ship ever built in Canada when she was launched in 1910. She lies now broken on Canoe Rocks, Isle Royal. Lost by a careless command, a, a simple mistake by an exhausted man. The heart of the ship, a 2200 horsepower steam engine, pushed the Emperor and 10,000 tons of iron ore at 13 knots through storms and darkness, fog and ice. But this night was clear, moonless, calm. The night was 4 of June, 1947. It was 4 a.m. In the engine room, there was the awful sound of steel and rock both trying to be in the same place at the, at the same time. The awful sound, louder even than screaming steam. Silence. Then, the sound of icy lake water sizzling against the boilers. In 25 minutes, the Emperor was lost. Her back was broken. The captain and wheelsman were missing. And with them, the knowledge of what truly went wrong. Twenty-one were rescued. 
two bodies were found. Ten were missing. There seemed no time even to launch a lifeboat properly. She rests now, huge across the bottom. Parts of her, like she could still be steaming for Whitefish Bay, but not far away, she's, she's jumbled and, and jagged. And you can know in that contest of rock and steel, the Emperor lost completely. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I told you of ghosts. Oh, I, I know. I know there are none, but... But if there were, would they not sail a ghost ship? Hmm? <laughs> a ship that vanished. The freighter Kamloops, small as the America, but she would... She would take with her more sailors than any other ship lost at Isle Royal. She was upbound at the Sioux Locks headed for Thunder Bay, the last trip of the season. And her crew was anxious to be home for Christmas. The year was 1924. The night of December 7 was cold and stormy. Spray froze to the rigging, and Kamloops was heavy with ice. The bridge officers must have been concerned. Visibility was low. The crew hacked away at the ice on deck, but then she just disappeared. There was, at that time, only one man left on all of Isle Royal, a trapper. Ralph Anderson was huddled down in his shack trying to stay warm that night, December 7th. He heard a whistle blowing, moaning, above the howl of the wind, a ship's distress signal. He didn't know where it was, so he stayed put. He had food for a winter, uh, for himself, but food for a week for the crew of a freighter. It gnawed on him, though. The temperature that night would reach 30 below. He thought about the crew of that ship, dead, now, for certain. The next spring, an old Indian found the bodies of seven of the Kamloops crew, all frozen. One of them was sitting on a log with his storm clothes. The mate, just like he was alive. In his hand, he had one lifesaver candy, pinched tight. Part of the cargo of the ship, fresh as if it had just come from the roll. There was a girl aboard, too. By her own account, the last survivor. A note in bottle. I am the last one alive, freezing and starving on Isle Royal. Still, there was no sign of the wreck and no clue as to what went wrong. Somewhere, she lay sleeping, her crew entombed, her cargo spoiled. Her engine room telegraph set to, finished with engines. I wish, my girls, I could tell you the Gamloop sailed on, a ghost ship. Glimpse now and then in the fog, a skeleton hanging over her wheel. Yeah, what a fine story that would make. 
Well, some do say the ship is haunted, but not by her crew. She's haunted by the spirit of the trapper, Anderson, who heard their cries and whistles. Who would die, never knowing the true fate of the freighter Kamloops? The America, the Emperor, the Kamloops, all the others, they were once just ships, beautiful to be sure, but just ships built by just ordinary men. But now they are part of the treasure, the crown jewels of this royal island. <laughs> yeah, that, my girls, is the story. Mm -hmm. Every year spring returns, and every year the island is green.